Hey YouTube, this is Roberto Blake and today I'm going to be showing you how to do quick and simple hair selection and how to change hair color in Photoshop CS6. Now you'll notice that I've already actually um, got something going here and this isn't um, what I would usually do. I'd usually go back in and I'd have all the individual strands of hair selected and brushed out. I actually did that earlier. It took me about maybe somewhere between 10 or 15 minutes, but um, you guys don't need to actually watch me do that. Um, I've just done a quick two minute version here, for example, because I have our completed version over in the other tab um, where I'll be able to show you um, how we actually go back and forth with the editing once we're done. But um, just for a quick illustration, this shows you in quick mask mode and this is with it off. Um, so you see that it's making our selection here for us. So that's what you'll want to do. You'll want to go into quick mask mode. You'll want to um, paint. I use a Wacom tablet. You may be using a mouse. Uh, if you don't have a Wacom tablet, I recommend getting them. They will definitely save you time if you're doing intense photo editing, retouching, or photo manipulation. Uh, it's worth the investment. So just go ahead and grab a Wacom tablet. If you're using a Wacom tablet, make sure you have this button selected, which is always use pressure for size when brush preset controls are active. Um, and the reason is that with the pressure sensitivity, if you go um, lighter, you'll be able to get the individual strands of hair. Heavier, you'll be able to get your larger areas. And again, big time saver. You won't have to use the shortcut bracket keys to keep resizing your brush and making it bigger or smaller like this. Although that's a shortcut you should learn anyway just because it'll make your workflow faster. All right, so we've got our hair selected and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our shortcut controls to do what? Invert that selection. And um, I don't know what it is anymore on a Mac because I haven't been using those for a while. I'm back over to PC again. Um, and for us, it's control shift I. I believe that for you guys over in Mac world, it'll be um, Apple shift and I. So, um, and if not, it'll be command shift I, but anyway, you guys should know your shortcuts better than me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to hue and saturation. That's going to create an adjustment layer for us that only has the hair selected that we've done here. And you'll see that we can use our slider and it will change the hair accordingly. So that's pretty cool. And you can do something extreme or something that looks fairly natural, you know, make our honey blonde there, you know, whatever you want. I'm going to go over here where um, you can see that I've actually done a much more refined job on the hair selection here. Um, you can see the individual strands there. Obviously, I went well, with more attention to detail it on the right. Um, I was zoomed and cropped in. By the time I go over to the left, I just got a little lazy with it. But um, it's a simple fix, and you can see that um, you know this looks really good. And we'd never know that wasn't part of the original hair color of the photo cropped here with the uh, head and shoulders action. So I'm going to click off, and you can see the original, and there. And again, um, not a whole lot to this once you um, get going with it. And we can tone down the saturation if we want so that it looks even more natural. Um, I would say pulling it back to about here you know, does the job. And then when you get even more intense with some of the color correction stuff over here in your slider, it still looks fairly natural. Um, so now some people prefer to um, go colorized or it might be for the artistic style they're going with and do a complete changeover on this. You know, I'm not as much of a fan of that, but if we were going to do it, she has um, a darker um, set of hair. And if we want to do this and we can make it more natural by um, adjusting several things obviously that's not gonna do it there um, and we can even just dial back some of the opacity here to blend with the original color a little more um, but turn up this darkness and I'm gonna pull that back and so you start to get a general idea of what can be done with this. And again, it all still looks really good. 
and what if we increase the saturation here? Uh, so anyway, it, you know, you can play around with it, and again, you can get all kinds of different results out of it. You can start to mess with doing things with adjusting your blend modes here, and again, you can make it um, a little more natural by doing that. And here, I've managed to make her, you know, a fairly convincing, um, you know, uh, dirty blonde. Uh, no pun intended there. So this is the best method I've come up with for editing and manipulating hair color in Photoshop CS6. Um, for you guys, you know, this won't be extremely resource intensive. This isn't very hard. This is one of the easier things to do. But again, it's something that you see constant questions for, and I just wanted to have an answer for you guys. Some people will say, we'll use the quick select tool or use the uh, pen tool, but uh, for hair, hair is more organic, and I just like the feel that comes from using uh, the brushes and the Wacom tablet, so that's why I do it that way. So now you know how to uh, change hair quickly and cleanly, and more, most importantly, non-destructively in Photoshop CS6. Um, I have a couple of more, um, I have a couple of more retouching tutorials coming up for you guys. I know I haven't done the tutorials in a little while, but um, this is actually one of five that I've actually already shot. Uh, so I'll just be posting those incrementally um, when I'm done editing them. And I hope you guys look forward to them. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, share this with your friends. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys on the next video.